So this year, the Galaxy Tab A9 Plus, it has made a ton of improvements over last year's Galaxy Tab A8. And I can almost assure you that so many people out there, they are sleeping on this device, they are talking about the iPads of the world, or even the more expensive Galaxy tablets. But a lot of people are missing all of the improvements that Samsung has made to their budget lineup. So is this Galaxy Tab A9 Plus worth buying? Is it really worth your money? Or how is the competition out there? Well, well, I'm gonna let you know all of that in my full review. So with all that being said, let's get right into it and let's talk about the Galaxy Tab A9 Plus. So Samsung this year, they've made a lot of name changes to their devices. So a lot of people might be confused with what the Tab A9 Plus actually is. Last year, we had the Galaxy Tab A8 and they technically had the A7 Lite. Well, this year they have the Galaxy Tab A9 and they have the Galaxy Tab A9 Plus. This A9 Plus, it is replacing the Galaxy Tab A8 from last year. I was not very impressed with the Galaxy Tab A8. I did recommend it to people for basic usage. And if you are just looking for a basic Android tablet, even today, the Galaxy Tab A8, it will do a decent job. But it did have a Unisoc processor and it is very, very slow overall. But they did upgrade the processor in this device and now we have a Snapdragon 695G and it also comes with four gigabytes of RAM in the base model compared to only three gigabytes of RAM in the base model of the Tab A8. So they made a lot of improvements to this device and honestly I'm blown away by what we're getting for the money here. Now if you look at the design of this tablet you're going to see something very very similar to last year. It doesn't seem super different. It actually looks pretty much the same but we do get a nice 11 inch tablet tablet with a nice aluminum back and it does feel very nice overall. You don't get a fingerprint sensor in this tablet. You do have to rely on face unlock, but face unlock, it was actually pretty fast for me and I didn't have too many issues. It just needs decent lighting conditions to work, but it did all right. Now we do have dual speakers on each side of the tablet and this tablet actually does have a headphone jack and that is extremely rare nowadays. Most tablets and phones, even budget phones nowadays a lot of them aren't coming with headphone jacks so I was very shocked to see it in a tablet like this so that's a really big deal another upgrade by the way I have to mention this does have Samsung DeX however the USB-C port here it is USB-C 2.0 so you cannot connect a monitor and use a USB-C hub and an HDMI cable you cannot connect this to a monitor like that it might work with some type of MHL connection and that's sort of a bootleg way to do it. I don't know how good that's going to work. I have not been able to test that, but this does not have a later USB-C version that actually works with connecting to a monitor. Unfortunately, it's only USB-C 2.0 here. But a lot of people, they're not thinking about that in their budget tablets. They're really just wanting decent performance and a good screen, and they're just wanting an overall good experience for their basic usage. And I'm really shocked at how good this tablet is when you look at the actual screen of it. You do get a 1080p screen with a good resolution. It is a 1920 by 1200 resolution on this 11 inch screen. And another thing I was shocked to find in this tablet is a 90 hertz display. Apparently Apple cannot put a 90 hertz display in their $800 iPhones, but here we have Samsung providing it in their $229 Android tablet. That's right, this tablet is under $300. It is much cheaper than the Galaxy Tab S6 Lite. I know that tablet has been going on sale around 200, but to see this tablet at $229 at the retail price, that means when it goes on sale around Black Friday and around the holidays, you might see this around $180, $190, maybe even $150 on a crazy sale. I would not expect that nowadays or very close to this video, but the point is there are going to be a lot of sales on it. And even at $229, if you're looking at the retail price, this is going to give you better performance than the Tab S6 Lite, and that is a really big deal. And getting a 90 hertz display, that is even better than the Galaxy Tab S7 FE, it's better than the Galaxy Tab A8, and it's better than the S6 Lite 2022 or 2020. So to see that in this, it's very, very good. Now the colors are a little bit muted. You're not going to love the colors compared to a nice, gorgeous AMOLED display. The screen here is not as good as the Galaxy Tab S9 FE, for example. So of course, you're going to see a little bit of a downgraded display 
compared to those $400 or $500 Android tablets. But the display is still very good overall, especially for $229, and I am impressed that we do have a 90 hertz display here. Technically, it is a TFT LCD display, but regardless, I do think that when I'm watching content on this, when I'm watching YouTube, or when I'm watching any other entertainment, I'm still having a very good experience with this display. And that does go as well for performance. Now, no, it is not a super performance champ. If you do open up eight, nine, or 10 different apps in the background, eventually things are gonna have to reload. If you open up even six or seven apps and you're really going back and forth between them and doing a lot of intense stuff, yeah, you might have to reload an app here or there, but whenever I'm scrolling the menus, I'm not noticing any lag. Whenever I'm going from app to app and opening up two or three apps, things are actually going fairly smoothly on this device. And this is also going to be good for some very basic gaming. If you are someone who does game on your Android tablet, no, this will not be a high-end Android gaming tablet, but it will still handle those lower-end graphics or even medium graphics on an Android tablet. It should do just fine for for a lot of games out there, because a lot of games on phones and tablets, they're not too intense, so I do think this will handle a lot of games, and it will be able to handle even some more intense games, maybe on lower settings. Now, one thing we do need to talk about is software updates, and I am expecting Samsung to provide at least two big operating system updates. I haven't heard officially on this yet, but I would expect that Samsung would support this, which is pretty good, but it does come with Android 13 out of the box. That is nice. It does actually have that taskbar at the bottom of the screen, which is cool if you do actually have that turned on. But at the same time, you have to remember that it does start out one year late because Android 14 is already out. So the software situation isn't quite as good as their phones. They're now offering like seven years of OS updates, but you will get more years of security patches. I think it's actually gonna be three or even four years of security patches there. So I haven't found that out officially as of this review, but I will say Samsung is normally a little bit better at supporting their devices than Lenovo. I know Lenovo is catching up a little bit, but Samsung, they do provide a lot in this tablet, including Samsung DeX. I was very shocked to find out that Samsung DeX is here. I know there is a newer Samsung DeX that will be rolling out to this tablet, I'm sure. I'm sure it will roll out to this just like it has to other tablets. But the older DeX is working on this right now, the classic DeX, and I was pretty surprised that Samsung did include that. So if we recap so far, this does have a really nice display for the price. It does have 90 hertz. It does have a very improved processor. It has more RAM than the previous A8. In a lot of ways, the display is better. Also, the performance is better. The RAM is better. There is a lot to like in this device over the Galaxy Tab A8 from last year or from a little bit over a year ago. But how is the battery life and has it improved since the Galaxy Tab A8? Well, this does have the same battery size as the Tab A8. I don't think you're going to see any noticeable improvements in battery life. Yes, we do have a different processor, but we do have a 90 hertz display and that extra refresh rate may drain a little bit of extra battery. So I do think this will have similar battery life overall to the Tab A8. Now, battery life is so subjective, of course. If you are gaming on your tablet all day, if you're doing a lot of Zoom calls, those things could take more battery life. But I was still getting around eight hours of screen on time. But again, it might vary depending on what you're doing. Now, one thing I have to mention as well, well, this does come with 64 gigabytes of storage in the base model. You might want a little bit more. If you do, you can actually upgrade to 128 gigs. And that model will actually have eight gigabytes of RAM, which is pretty insane for a budget tablet. And when that device and that model goes on sale with more RAM, that's actually gonna be a really, really good deal for a lot of people just wanting a basic tablet. Now there is no dust or water resistance in this tablet, so that's one thing to keep in mind. And it does only charge at 15 watts, but this has has decent speakers for the price. Overall, this is actually a pretty attractive tablet for those of you looking for something on a budget. So that's why I am blown away this year. That's why I am so impressed. That's why I'm just absolutely mind blown at all the upgrades. Like Samsung gave us a better screen. They gave us a better processor. They gave us more RAM. They gave us more storage in the base model and they kept the price the same. We are in a time where inflation is crazy, where prices are going up all over the place. Samsung recently released the Galaxy S24 Ultra and they released it at a higher price. 
a lot of devices are going up in price. But to see all of these improvements and to see this at the same price, that is where the budget segment of tablets has really changed. No longer do you have to spend $500 on a tablet to get a 90 hertz display. You used to have to spend like three or $400 even to get a 1080p display. Now we have 1080p, we have 90 hertz, we have a decent processor. A lot of these Snapdragon 600 processors, they used to be reserved for mid-range tablets at three, four, five, six hundred dollars To see that in a $229 tablet, a tablet that will go on sale off and on through the year, I am just blown away by that. So no, you don't get stylus support. The screen isn't quite as bright as some of those other tablets like the S9 Plus, but still, when you look at it for the money, of course, it's going to be much more affordable and it's going to be able to do all of your basic stuff and even a little bit extra. I did not feel super slowed down by this tablet. I didn't think it was the slowest thing ever. Of course, if you are someone who is used to something like a Tab S9, if you're used to something like the Galaxy Tab S9 FE, you're going to find this is gonna be a little bit slower. But if you've been used to budget tablets, if you're used to the Galaxy A line, this is going to be a huge step up this year and I would highly recommend you upgrade. Samsung did not send this device to me. I paid for it with my own money. I did give Samsung a bad review last year on the Samsung Galaxy Tab A7 Lite. I didn't really like that small tablet. Now this year it is replaced by the Galaxy Tab A9. I hope to review that eventually. But this A9 Plus, it is really one of the best budget tablets tablets out. And I know Lenovo is really pushing them hard. They're releasing another tablet this year that is going to be competing directly with this right in this budget range. And they really made a lot of improvements to their tablet. So I'm sure Samsung felt the pressure, but to get a micro SD card slot, to get more storage, to get more RAM, to even get an eight gigabyte option if you want to spend a little more money. This tablet is definitely a great budget tablet. And finally, I don't have to give all these reservations and say, oh, the Galaxy Tab A8, I guess it's good for the basics, but it's not really fast. Finally, I could say we have a decent performing device that has a good screen, good battery life, it's a good all around tablet with good speakers, and it's gonna be great for most people if you're just looking for a good basic companion. Of course, if you do want something better, there are a lot of other tablets out there, especially nowadays, you're getting a lot of sales on the S9 FE, you're seeing a lot of sales on the Galaxy Tab S9, or even last year's Galaxy Tab S8. But at $229, I'm not sure that you're gonna find a better tablet in the Android space. So hopefully this review has helped you out. If you do like it, please give me a sub and give me a like, that does mean a ton. And I will have some affiliate links in the description. If you click on those links, and if you decide to buy this device, well, that is a great way to support me as a creator. So please stick around on my channel and check out some other videos if you get more time. I really hope you have a great day and I really hope you enjoy your week.